Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be shooting some expired film from the year 2000 and when I saw the box and the expiry date I thought to myself oh that's not too bad that's not too long ago not realizing it was my god 25 years ago was the year 2000 that puts life into perspective a little bit doesn't it it seems to go Woof, you know but I've got these three rolls of expired film that was sent to me by Mitch out in America. Mitch, if you're watching, cheers, mate. I'm going to be experimenting with those films in this video. And I get emails and private messages as well from people that have got hold of expired film and are not quite sure how to shoot it or how to develop it. There's a lot of stuff online that says do this, do that. Um, so I'm going to give you my two cents worth about expired film. And then later on, we'll get on and put it into action and see how this film holds up. I've had a lot of expired film over the years I've shot a lot of expired film sometimes I've had good results sometimes I've had bad results but now and again it can be quite fun and quirky and people do enjoy shooting expired film so just like most consumables chemicals food batteries they all have expiry dates and film is no exception that has an expiry date too and with most films the expiry date is two or three years after manufacture but if you've got a film that's just gone past its expiry date, it doesn't go to say it's no good. Most of these films are pretty good and still run on for four, five, six years after their expiry date, and you'll see no difference. But the older the film becomes, the more chance that the emulsions and the chemicals in the film are going to start breaking down over time. So that's always the best way if you guys have got film and it's gone past its expiry and you don't intend to shoot it for some time. Best way is just to put it in the freezer and preserve it. Like most things, we know if you stick something in a freezer, you can bring it out at a later date and still eat it. Normally when I buy a film, whatever it is, and it's fresh film, if I intend to use that film in the coming weeks, I'll just leave it indoors uh, in the cupboard at room temperature and I'll go and use it to my heart's content. If I've got film that's kind of coming up to its expiry or maybe just getting out of date and I don't intend to use it, I'll more than likely put that film in a fridge. Uh, if I don't intend to use that film for a long, long period of time, I'll end up putting it in a little bag in, the, in a container inside the freezer. So that will preserve it until the next time uh, I want to go in there and shoot that film. That's what I do with my film that's uh, coming up to its expiry or is already expired. So if recently you've bought some expired film or been gifted some expired film and you're not quite sure what to do with it, there is a rule of thumb that says uh, shoot expired film one stop overexposed for every decade of its age. So if it's a film that's 10 years old, you pick it up, put it in your camera and you'd shoot it at one stop over. So if it's a 400 speed film, you'd set your ASA to 200 and treat it as a 200 speed film. And the reason people do that is because over time, film gets less sensitive and it starts to deteriorate. So giving it that extra bit of exposure helps it out. But that's just a rule of thumb. And I've had plenty of film that's been kept in a freezer and it's been fine shooting at box speed and developing normally. But the quality of the film, if it's expired, all depends on how it's been stored over the years. If it's been stored in a freezer and it's been looked after, the chances are it's gonna work as it did when it went in the freezer 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's what I've noticed in my experience. And that's exactly what Mitch has told me about this film. He said it's been stored in a freezer and he's already shot it and he said it's all tickety-boo. He said it's all fine. But I still like to do my own tests for my development. So if you do find yourself getting hold of some expired film and you don't quite know its history, I'd say it's best to follow that rule of thumb where you overexpose one stop per decade. And then when it comes to developing, you're still not quite sure. The best way of doing that is probably stay in developing. So let it sit in a highly diluted developer of rod or whatever for an hour. Let it stand or semi-stand and let the developer do its own thing. That way you'll get half decent results that at least you can print or scan at the end rather than, you know, better the devil you know, as they say. But if you've got a load of expired film, it's worth doing some tests on it beforehand. You never know, it might be fine. And then you can shoot that film on whatever you want and get nice results. Even if you've got only one roll of 35 millimeter film, you can still cut a little piece out of the camera and do some tests with. And the thing is with expired film, it's always a lottery, it's always a gamble. You never really know how that film has been looked after over the years. If it's 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years old, uh, you've bought a job lot on eBay and it's quite cheap and you've got a bargain. And the person at the other end says, yeah, it's all been frozen, it's, it's all great. 
you never really know what's been happening with that film over time. I mean, you know, people don't sit in their houses for generally 30 or 40 years. So if it has been frozen, it's been moved from place to place and possibly been put on a shelf at some point for a load of months in a, in a humid, hot environment or whatever. So you never really know what that, the life of that film, where it's been. And in my experience with shooting expired film, I've had some nice results, I've had some not so nice results. And what I've found sometimes you can, especially with 120 film, you can find that the backing paper is stuck to the actual film itself, which can be a bit, bit nasty. Sometimes the backing paper writing can imprint itself on the, on the actual film after you developed it. That can look quite funky. Often you get these sort of moisture looking blemishes and stuff where, where the moisture's got into the film. So there's all sorts of strange things that can go on with the emulsion with expired film if it hasn't been looked after. But some people enjoy that look. Some people hunt for expired film just for that reason that they maybe they're doing a project or something and it's all on expired film. It is what it is. You get what you get. So my idea is pretty simple. There's the three rolls of film that Mitch gave me, the T-Max 100 from the year 2000. Uh, I'm gonna load one into a Mimia RZ67, set up a real simple scene, and do some exposure tests on the, on, on the film itself. And then I'm gonna develop normally and see what I get. That way, um, I've still got two rolls left to shoot, and the other roll that I'd be experimenting with is not wasted because I can make a print out of uh, any one of those negatives with this old Kodak camera. I'll show the setup, I'll show you what I'm up to, and I'll show the results that I get at the end. Hopefully, as Mitch said, this film will work nicely. So this is the scene that I've chosen for this test. It's a pretty simple scene. Um, I've got an old Kodak camera that I'm gonna be taking a photograph of, an old 127 camera and it's sitting on a piece of uh, brown cardboard and then uh, uh, one side I've got some black card and the other side I've got the white wall from the from this room um, and this is a window behind me and I couldn't do this in the daytime because it was too bright so I've had to wait till night time to do this uh, the Kodak T-Max from 25 years ago is sitting inside the camera that's already loaded the RZ67 has got a 6.7 back on it that's ready to go and I've just done some metering and it's come back at uh, f eight at one thirtieth of a second because i'm using this camera i've got the bellows extended i need to allow a little bit for the bellows so um, i'm going to be shooting 5.6 at one thirtieth of a second that will be my metered exposure and then i'm going to overexpose one stop to one fifteenth two stops to one eighth three stops to a quarter of a second then half a second and then one second and then I'm going to underexpose two frames and go to 160 and 125. So I'll have a nice little bunch there to play with. The very last frame, I'm going to point the camera towards the light and just leave it open and completely overexpose the last frame or so. Uh, so when I get around to developing, I'll be able to look at that part of the negative and see the density on it. If my developing wasn't long enough, obviously I'll be able to see through that part. A little bit like the 35mm film leaders that you get when you develop that, you notice that they're very dark or pretty much you can't see through them. So uh, I'll be able to evaluate my developing when I look at that part of the film. Five point six one thirtieth of a second. Just make sure I've got everything tickety boo, and I have. First shot done. That didn't sound very good. That one fifteen sounded a bit fast to me. I'm going to go back to 1 15th because that sounded a bit iffy to me when I hit that one. That sounded better. So I'm in bold mode now, just going to shine this bright light into the lens, really overexpose it, open the aperture to 3.5. It might even bleed onto the next frame, but. I now know that that's properly overexposed that last frame. Okay, let's have a look at the film. There it is there. So it's all exposed now. All I need to do is just run off and develop it. And there it all is. T-Max from, oh, from 2000, sorry, 25 years ago has now been exposed. 
So here are my negatives after developing normally and metering at box speed. I knew I had a problem with the 1 15th setting not firing properly, so I took another one at 1 15th right at the end. So let's put that in its place now, and now you can see all my steps of exposure. Straight away, I can see the film is good to go. My metered exposure looks fine. And if I did use the rule of thumb and shot the film without testing at two stops overexposed, I would have overexposed my whole roll. But that still wouldn't have been a problem if it was the only roll I had and Stan developed the film, a bit of exposure is easy to recover. Better the devil you know, right? But it's nice to know that this film has stood up well over 25 years and more than likely has been frozen and kept well. There's no emulsion issues, there's no ugly grain, it's like brand new, so I'm happy to now shoot the two remaining films on something I enjoy, confident in knowing that it's going to deliver. To some people, this expired film would have been a disappointment. They shoot expired film hoping to get some sort of weird emulsion patterns. But for me and to others, it would have been a right result if they'd got a brick of this film cheap and it worked, as this does. So, happy days. So booming with confidence that this film is fine to shoot and develop normally, I took a Fuji GSW 6x9 camera loaded with a roll of Kodak to the beach and I just walked around taking my time looking for compositions and as we always say we learn from our mistakes. I had gone out the day before only to get on location and went to load the film only to realise that I didn't have a take up sport in the camera which is really strange, right? So I couldn't take any pictures, but when I got back home, I checked on my other 120 cameras and they all had a spool in. I then realized the last time I used this camera was for a vlog and I took the spool out for video visuals. So in light of all that, I've now put two spare spools in my camera bag and a couple in the car, just in case it ever happens again. Anyway, I was happy that the film worked and if Mitch got this for a bargain price, then he's had a right result. Another issue with expired film is after developing seeing a heavy fog base. You can use anti-fogging agents for that but I've never tried it so I can't say much about that. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have bought expired film or do you buy expired film, do you use the rule of thumb or do you just shoot the film as is and see what happens. And if you've had any bad experiences with expired film, tell us about it. As always thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.